Acoustic Research. This, this brand here. I remember them from my childhood. My father had some speakers from them. They were really good. We got some subwoofers from them and they were really good. And then they disappeared for like a decade. And then they came back making like lawn speakers that look like rocks and lamps. And I'm like, what? And I used to like, that was a, uh, and then <clears throat> only recently has a few acoustic research things come out that's like, oh, that's actually audio again. There's those planars, which I'd love to try. They fell apart in my hands at CanJam in 2017, 2016 or 2017, like a couple years ago. I picked these up and wow, and then it literally fell apart. So uh, then these, I saw these on Mass Drop and I wasn't really super interested in getting a set of square this is the future boxes in your ear, bento lunches in your ears, IMs. But for 150 bucks, I think that's what I paid. It's not currently on mass drop, so the price is gone. Um, I was like, all right, let me try this. So it comes with lots of stuff. Uh, by the way, this set is on Amazon for like $300. Uh, and I think they just weren't selling at that price. I'm pretty sure these were supposed to be a $300 set and they couldn't sell them. And they said, hey, Mass Drop, can you sell them? And they're like, hey, about this price. And they're like, ah, oh, fuck. So there were two options. There's the AR100 and the AR E10. And the E10, which is the version I got, is $50 more. And that's because it has a hybrid balanced armature, which is their proprietary, not Knowles. Doesn't say Knowles. Everyone's proud of their Knowles balanced armatures. A proprietary balanced armature that apparently Acoustic Research developed. I don't even know if they still do that. And an eight millimeter beryllium dynamic. So I'm like, okay, the E1, the hundred, the cheaper one, only had a single 10 millimeter dynamic beryllium and this has an eight millimeter but a balanced armature of their own design so that's enough to interest me and then you see what it comes with and it wasn't like it comes with a free car but it comes with a four pole pentacon balance cable which i'm currently running off my qes reference it comes with a standard cable oh by the way two pin on top and then the kicker is it comes with their own Bluetooth cable, which this, if you haven't seen any of these, there are a few of them, and I might fuck Future Zeos up and say, hey, Future Zeos, why don't you link a few of these? Because these are just IM cables, which are very short and have a battery pack and a control box. And you can Bluetooth this. It's you plug in USB, you charge it, you hook it to your IEMs. Uh, you usually put it behind your neck. You don't want it to hang around like a chin strap, but this can convert any two pin IEM into an almost wireless IEM because there's still a wire here. Blatantly, there's a wire. Instead of it going down more into a player or into a USB or into a fucking Bluetooth, it goes just around the back of your head. And this is probably going to be the way I tell people to use Bluetooth IEMs because th these sets exist, like these true wireless ones. And I've got a couple here. This is an MPOW set. And my problem with them is it's fucking fidgety. It's like I don't, I have big hands and small ears. And it, well, I don't have small ears, but this is not a solution that I'm willing to like fuck around with. I'm going to review some. If you want me to review some, please tell me if you use any and if they're in the description below, if they're good or not. Because I've got this set, I got a set of wizards, I got a couple of them now lying around. That it's just, the act of putting them in my ears is annoying. Picking them up and fiddling with this little fucking thing. That's why I, that's why goddamn Apple AirPods are so popular. There's a stick and you hang it and it doesn't actually go in your ear. That's why everyone loves them. And frankly, the design is great, and I can't yell at them for it. But this is like the audiophile answer to that. Because this means you could still use any 2-pin. OH-10s with this. Link to OH-10s in the description in case you haven't seen them. They're great. So you could just plug any IM, and they come... 
this particular acoustic research set obviously only comes with a two pin, but there are ones that are MMCX and et cetera, et cetera. I say that, but I really don't know if there's more than just that in MMCX. So that alone is like a, someone said, and I couldn't find this sold as is, like on its own. Someone said that cable's $100. And I'm like, I twisted my head, like I'm doing the shaft bend, like $100 for that. And I've used it and it's pretty fucking good. Like I'm using a you know $2,500 Italian reference balance stamp right now on them. And that's pretty fucking good. And that's comparably all right. Like that's, that's all right compared. I mean, I have this set plugged right into my 789 with the unbalanced. And there is a sound change for the better with balanced. I think IMs more than headphones benefit from a separate ground because they're so sensitive. That it's just, it just, I don't know. Look, I'm judging based on my ears, not measurements. And my ears could be very wrong. I'm aware of that. But I'm just telling you how I feel. This is a feels channel. I feel like she's cute. High school DXD doesn't get enough play. And I feel like these are absolutely fucking lootly worth it. Not just for the three cables, one being a Bluetooth, a decent little case. What else does it have? I mean, that's basically it. They're comfortable, but I think the angle is a little bit severe. Like, like the, the wire goes around, that's fine. And then that's like forward. And I mean, it could stick out, but then you gotta like, you can't rotate the wire. You have to sort of bend this over. So it's got a weird like correction fault. Like I want this to not be there. I want it to be slightly back, but it's not uncomfortable. Like I can wear them for a while and just wiggle my ears and then they're fine. They are sexy in a way that I haven't seen other IMs be sexy though. Because you know what, like OH-10s, like I was just talking about them, they're that weird like, they look like the spaceship from Arrival. And it's like, all right. And a lot of these organic shapes. And these are proof fucking positive, you don't need to do that if you just stick the goddamn tip out real far. It could just be a square. And I wouldn't bother reviewing these as positively as I'm going to if they sounded just mediocre. If they sell for 150, you're gonna you're gonna see them on Amazon. I'll link them to link to them on Amazon. If on Amazon they're over 200, don't buy them. I think they're probably still worth that, but I got this for one one like 45, 155. I don't remember what it was but they absolutely are killer at that level. They have a very, very, the beryllium. Let's talk about beryllium. You grind it up, sprinkle it on your cereal, you get superpowers. Don't do that. Beryllium means very light, very thin. It's not, uh, what's the other organic one that uh, ZMF uses? Oh God, I forget the name of that material. I'm sure you'll yell at me in the comments, even though I've obviously remembered because I shut this camera off and now I'm fine. It's the same thing that the little creative Ravana lives use. Oh God. Oh God, I saw Joker by the way. Joker was a masterwork of both acting and filmmaking. Just throw that in the middle of this review, just for shits and giggles. Um, putting these back in my ears now. Have you have you viewed them enough? They're they're actually really like they're light too. They're like stunningly light. <sighs> well, I can't blow them because the the uh, foam tip is too sticky. I'm sorry. It was a bad example, and any other reviewer would have stopped because he looked stupid, but not Zeos. Like, I could feel them fitting almost flush in my ears, and that's that's a look. If we have a picture of them in a person's ear, where are them in a person? Show me these in somebody. I want them in somebody. What are these? The, uh, the AR-E10s? Oh, there they go. Here they are on Amazon. Here they are on Amazon for... Or it's just not gonna load. Just, oh, there we go. Is there a picture of them in a human's ears? Yep, there you go. 
Look at that. Oh, they look... Looks like the future. Anyway, back to playing them. They have a very, very smooth delivery of power, which I know that's a weird description, but this is C-Reviews. Hi. And like ACDC's playing. Uh, come and get it. Like, I'm playing them loud currently, too, because that reference amp is at negative 17. And they don't bother me. And I'm not sure what I like more. The fact that the beryllium is doing a great job at low-end distribution and having a smoothness there. Or maybe Acoustic Research makes the best balanced armatures in the world, and the one that's in this is just amazing. Because it's loud, and it's like guitars and screaming and it doesn't bother me but it's not that when i did the areolas the areol areolas the the little finchinese the air the or areola finishy those were like chill i am's chill as fuck i am's and these aren't as chill but are as smooth Let's skip around a bit more dmx x gonna give it to you I really like these. I really, really like these. The way they present a forward... It sounds like someone took my brain, opened up my skull, then pushed a really good speaker right against my forehead. Here. Sometimes it's behind your eyes. Sometimes it's behind your head. This feels... I think it might be the angle that they're intruding into my ear, ear holes which doesn't make any sense because everything just goes into your ear holes. But the sound is right there. DMX is like yelling at me. But there's things happening to my left and right. Calmly, quietly, poli politely. Fuck what you heard. It's what you're hearing. It's what you're hearing. Listen. This, is this a song about audiophile things? Is X gonna give it to you? Literally, his audiophile sonata? Because, I mean, fuck what you heard. It's what you're hearing. I wish she's had an X in their title, and they'd be like, oh, that makes perfect sense. These might have... here. I, I think I figured it out. I think I figured it out. Just, just now, because I listen to these things, and I'm trying to get that thing... That an IEM do. And I think I know what they do now. Because this is the Kaiki theme from fucking Monogatari. The, the really bas the big bassoon. These do a center image bigger than any other IEM. That's what it is. Nailed it. Because, and here's the thing. It's not like, oh, they're very narrow and everything's... I, I complain when IEMs play a ball of sound, right? It's just a confused, messy ball of sound. Hate that. Well, this is a ball of everything that's supposed to be playing in the center of your imaging. And then, actual soundstage beyond that. Because this, this song has got, like, someone playing, a, like, a... I guess a cello like a cello, and it sounds like this big, thick ball of cello sound. It's dead center, but there can be left and right. So it's like, I'm hearing it very intensely right there. It's, it doesn't sound like, oh, there's a cello here. and then, It doesn't sound even. It's If I could draw the sound stage across the imaging width, a very, very natural, neutral IM is, is the same width, the same volume across the sound stage. And this is the right volume on the left and right coming in. And then it just gets more and more intense in the center. It's got a big creamy center. Ooh. It sounds like it ramps up. And that's not a bad thing because I've listened to 700,000 IEMs. 
And if they all do the exact same thing, this gets real boring. So I got to find that thing. And it took me a while to just, it just found it with that song. I was like, God, that cello is just present. And that's why I'm trying, I was just, it was all these words getting towards the back of my head. So we have non-offensive treble. We've got a solid beryllium low end. You've got, I'd say average to better than average soundstage. I mean, OH-10s are just soundstage and bass and are great. And then 10 P1s are narrow and aggressive. 10 T1s do what this is doing, but they spread it out and that's the end of their soundstage. These have more soundstage and a smoother, butterier, butterier center. It's always got to come back to butter. How many reviews do I actually mention the word butter in? Probably a lot. Very hard to do this sort of sound and not offend me with treble or bass or muddiness or any sort of Truman Show. It's a life. It's got that really good, like, it sounds like sounds are emanating from the center and washing out. Best way I could describe it. I, I do my best to describe these things. Because things, especially like IEMs, you can look at as many measurement charts as you want about frequency response. And that tells you 8% of the story. I don't like measurements. I'm okay with measurements of DAX. I'm okay with measurements of amps. If you're going for pure neutrality, that's what you want to look at. I have liked some amps that measured poorly. I've liked some DAX that measured poorly. But a headphone? The fucks I give about measurements couldn't equate to higher than zero. Because it's like looking at a power graph on a car. Here's a Ferrari Enzo's power graph, and here's a Chevy Volt's power graph, and here's a fucking Honda Civic Type R's power graph. Which one of these would you like to drive? Now let me take away the names and just show you these weird lines. Let me drive them. Let me sit in them. Let me smell them. Let me pay the gas bill for a fucking three or four trips. Then I decide if I like that car. These would probably have a very big mid-range hump in a, in a measurement. I haven't checked. What is this? This is amazing. This is the best of soundtrack. Hugo Strasser und sein Tanzorchester. And that's just a band. And then it's Popo Kati Pelt. Twist. Popo Kati Pelt Twist. Wow, okay. This is great, though. All right, I have to let you hear it. All right, you don't know what the hell I'm saying. So I'm going to try to hold this near the microphone. Here we go. I've done this before. I think it works. Okay, how'd that work out? I really, I'm surprised by this because acoustic research, never saw them making a comeback. I hoped for it. And I certainly didn't expect it to be in the IAM fucking field with something actually interesting. The fact that they're using proprietary, their own balanced armatures and beryllium drivers, that's how you re If you're going to re-enter the market and you want to make a statement, that's how you do it. You push tech that other IAMs are barely touching on. Beryllium you'll see, and you'll see non nulls drivers, but most people are like, eh, non nulls driver. I want to see the next. I want to see a five six hundred dollar pair of these, in this shape too. Don't even don't even fucking change it. Just keep shoving things inside of it, because if they can keep this house sound, they'll succeed. They 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 the the reason I bought it was literally for the cables. I want this cable in my armor in my pile of cables. I want to have this cable. So if I was gonna pay fifty sixty bucks for a good one of these. I'll get an extra head IEM for a hundred and then an extra balance cable. I don't hate the cables, by the way. But, but, it's like this clear tube with the black in it. And it's a bit rubbery. Just a little bu bit, a lit bubbery. It's a lit bubbery. It's a bit rubbery. And you can see it's not quite 
straight like it's just gonna have that variation and that little kink may never go away from there they're acceptable IEM cables they're not they're not this this by the way is my um what was this the BGVP DM7 cable that I had uh, Viking weave which I'll link Viking weaves email he's the guy in the UK that does all the custom cables like custom cables like the the one that I don't have here right now the jewelry one and uh, he converted this over to balance for me like this this is a wire you go fuck about and it's not that they don't got the fuck cables but it comes with cables here's your little charging wire it comes with actually foam tips like four two different sizes of foam tips silicone tips which I guess are fine I can never ever use them and the case says acoustics research and is a good size there's not much more you could ask for like what I paid for this for what I paid for this this is beyond great now a lot of you are watching this and going but Zeos what about $50 IMs and yeah tin T2s um, ZS10 Pros and the newly added $40 uh, blonde BLO3s are all amazing the blondes, I'd say I'd take over HG-800s and Arias. I'd take these over them, too, because those are some of my least favorite, expensive, <clears throat> well-liked headphones. I just don't enjoy listening to them. And I enjoy listening to these. And that's really what you come here for. The Zeos enjoy it. Um, I'm probably going to start doing a thing, by the way. You tell me if you're interested. Although I've probably started already by the time this video has gone public. I think I want to do a wrap-up video every month. I'll just look at the reviews I've released and give everybody like a short rundown, like a three-minute video summarizing what happened in the month, maybe giving a sneak peek of what's happening the next month. Because I want to keep, I want to get my like watch time to 100% on a video at least once a month. And I would include it with the yard sale videos, but no one seems to watch the yard sale videos. I don't understand. You people don't want, you don't want cheap stuff. It's cheap, good stuff, and plus I make other announcements in those yard sale videos. Those should be as popular or more popular than these reviews. But we'll see. Maybe the little short, the shortened or summary videos will be a good step up. Anyway, today's Sunday. I live stream on the place that isn't here. The non-YouTube place. Shh. Demonetization. So uh, if uh, Wednesdays or Sundays, check out that other place with the my name the zeos pantera name and maybe you'll catch me all right this review is done i'm gonna think real hard about selling these if i sell them it'll probably be just these and the standard cable i will keep the bluetooth cable and probably the balance cable because that's one of the reasons i bought it but uh you know we can make a deal buddy we'll make a deal that wallpaper and all wallpapers are available in the description Along with, on my Patreon, there is a full, giant goddamn folder that you can access with every wallpaper I've ever used. I update it every like, month or so. Um, that's for $2 patrons. $5 patrons, yard sales, I think I'm talking about. First to the 10th of every month, I review something that I've bought or been given or been, or bought, or been given or bought or someone handed it to me or I found it in a dumpster. And the first to the 10th, I will sell it to you. Free shipping in the continental the United States blind silent auction you just bid whatever you can afford i don't want to force people to up their bids to compete with somebody if you can give me 41 dollars and 18 cents or something say that if you win you win if you don't win you don't win of course you're five dollars to try ten dollar tier is where you enter into the basically behind the scenes telegram chat where those people never shut up and i love them and i share pictures and i, I, I take multiple pictures of thumbnails mostly with anime girls uh, they pick which one to use, and they discuss it, and they have fights, and we discuss how mint chocolate chip ice cream, if you are watching this video on Patreon or publicly, there was a huge argument on whether mint chocolate chip ice cream is any good, and um, yes, it fucking is. Don't be a heathen was the, was the result of the poll. Uh, about 66% of people like mint chocolate chip ice cream. 33% of people don't like mint chocolate chip ice cream. You don't get the sort of a groundbreaking IM review info anywhere else. So welcome to see your reviews, and I'll see you tomorrow.